We had, how many of you were here, uh, oh goodness, quite a few years ago when we had our little Roadrunners experience? How many of you were here for that? Man, that's not very many. Where did all of those people go? How many of you have heard about the Roadrunner story? Okay, well that helps. That's, how many don't know what I'm talking about, but you would really like for me to tell you? Oh, okay, I will. We, you know, when this first started happening to us, it was embarrassing, actually. Um, this was quite a few years ago. Before we had this wing, the Emerald Johnson wing over here with the Hebrews Coffee Shop and Bookstore, before we had the prayer house, we'd have our, our Friday night meetings, Sunday night meetings. Back in the dining room, which is right behind the stage, we'd have our pre-service prayer meetings. And uh, I remember going one Friday night, uh, I went about 15 or 20 minutes early and I'm walking around the prayer room and just praying uh, pre-service prayer for the pre-service prayer. Pre, pre, pre. And a roadrunner came right up to the, there's a glass wall of windows and doors and a roadrunner comes right up to the window. Now, you know, maybe you've seen roadrunners all your life. I've lived in Reading f since 1968. I've never seen or heard of one in my life around here. And here's a roadrunner comes right up to the window and he's dancing, trying to get in, into the window. He's hitting the glass and going back. He's got this huge lizard in his mouth. And I'm, I'm like three feet away from it going, this is too weird to not be prophetic. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I thought this, this is too weird to not be prophetic. God, what are you saying to me? Expecting him to speak something to me. Nothing. So, uh, well, it is weird anyway. So I walked around and prayed. Finally, he took off. And a little, a little bit later, uh, Don came in from our school and Don Mayer. And, and uh, he came in and he was in there with me and we were walking around. And the roadrunner came back and, and Don goes, oh, he's back. And I said, what do you mean back? He says, yeah, he was here last Friday night. I went, you're kidding. Roadrunner, he comes to prayer meetings. And sure enough, I could hardly wait till the next week. The third week, he's back again. And he would only come to prayer meetings. He wouldn't come to hear us preach or anything. He would, but he'd come to prayer meetings. And he'd come to that room back there. And he'd almost always have this big lizard in his mouth. And he would dance at the window trying to get in. And uh, finally, Banning came to me once. They started having their youth uh, uh, Wednesday night pre-service prayer meeting in that room. And the roadrunner joined them for the prayer meeting. So he didn't mind if his old people or young people praying. He just wanted to come when they were praying. So, so I'm, I'm calling all these prophets that we know, and I'm talking to the intercessors, and I'm basically telling them, you know, really don't spread this around. We're already looked at kind of weird for what's happening around here. And I really don't want anyone to know we, we got a thing going on with a roadrunner. But... <clears throat> If you hear anything from the Lord, you know, help us out, that kind of a deal. And so I'm talking to these prophets and intercessors, and, and it was just, it was this ongoing, ongoing thing. It was really strange. In fact, when we started building the prayer house, this went on for months, only come to prayer meetings. In fact, I was in there on a Sunday morning, and I was teaching a class on signs and wonders. And there came one particular morning, and we used to have one service. Actually, we had two, and then we reduced it to one because we had the room. And then we went back to two. <laughs> Sorry, my humor is not coming across very well. <laughs> but before the service, we had classes. And so I was teaching class on signs and wonders. And I happened to be up that Sunday morning. And I started talking about signs that make you wonder, unusual experiences. Right on cue, the roadrunner shows up. <laughs> and I didn't, my back is to the wall of windows. And the guy sitting in the front row goes, you mean him? And I turned around and went, yeah, yeah, the roadrunner. So he's standing at the door, he's got his, you know, his lizard, and one time he chased off some blackbirds and got a big worm, and it was just entertaining to watch what he would do. So when we started building the prayer house, we have, if you've been in the prayer house, uh, please make sure you go in the prayer house, pray. If you go in the prayer house, on the far side, there's this huge rock, and if you look at the rock a certain way, it almost looks like an eagle's head. There's an interesting beak, everything. And this Roadrunner would go sit on top of that rock and watch them build the prowls. And then I found out somebody did, we, we had all kinds of people sending, sending uh, research papers on roadrunners. They're related to the eagle. Who would have thought of that? 
You know why I like them? They hate and eat rattlesnakes. Any animal that eats rattlesnakes is my best friend. I mean, they just, they dance in front of the thing till it strikes, they move out of the way, peck it on the back of the head, and they'll walk around for days with a snake just hanging out of its mouth, you know, until they just digest the whole thing. I, I would show you, but you wouldn't want to. So this went on, this went on for months. He'd go over to the prayer house and he stopped coming to our prayer meetings. He would just hang out over at the prayer house while it was being built. One day he got into the building and he was upstairs. How he got upstairs, we don't know. Jason, our janitor at the time, now world traveling evangelist or prophet, I should say, Jason was up vacuuming cleaning and the roadrunner's there. And Jason's basically the St. Francis of Assisi at, at that moment in time. And, and uh, so he, the, the roadrunner would go stand in the windowsill and look like he wanted to go out. And Jason would turn on some worship music, sit in the middle of the floor, and that, that bird would come perch right in front of him while he just worshiped. I'm not saying the bird cupped his wings. <laughs> I'm not saying he fell back, you know, like that. I'm not, I'm not saying any of that. I'm just, I'm just saying he would just sit right in front of Jason while, they, while he would worship. And then he'd feel bad about not working, so he'd go back to vacuum some more, and then he'd get curious about what would happen. He'd sit back down, turn the stereo back up, and they'd worship, and the bird would come right back again, right in front of him. This went on and on up through, throughout the evening. Finally, he finishes the room, and he, he, he goes down the stairway, because he has other rooms to clean, and the, the roadrunner goes right with him. So they're walking down this wide old hall over here, walking down the hall, and uh, unknown to him, there was somebody in another room, a classroom. And they opened the classroom door behind him, startled the bird. The roadrunner flew to the end of the hall into a plate glass window and died. Yeah, I'm sorry, it just did. It's, it's just, I know you're best friends with this thing now, but it, it just died. So Jason comes to get me. He's got the bird in the back under a little box. And he, and he says, <laughs> He says, I killed the roadrunner. I said, what happened? And he told me the story. I said, well, where is he? So I figured we'd just go raise him from the dead. So he says, he's back here. So we go back there. And I put my two fingers on his head. <laughs> commanded life. I know you're, you're hoping it ends well. It, it, he just stayed dead. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's weird. It's weird to have something like that in your life for months as a reminder of what God was doing for months and then have it dead. And so I went to my office. I said, God, <laughs> what's this all about? Because I'm thinking it'd be a really cool ending to have this thing raised from the dead. I could get a real good prophecy out of that somehow. I could interpret it some way. Nothing. I said, Lord, what's going on? And he spoke so clear to me. He said, what I'm bringing into the house had better have a way of being released from the house or it will die in the house. That word I will never forget. Why? Because the Lord speaks uniquely. His language sometimes is English or whatever your native tongue is. Most of the time he speaks through unique circumstances, situations. He's always talking. What's the point? That particular story already reinforced a value we had, but there was something so sharpened, there was an edge sharpened to everything that we did because we realized everything that happens here has to be taken out or it'll die here. That's why week after week we talk about praying for the people you work with, with your neighbors, your relatives, your family, laying hands on folks. We see that that's really is the backbone of our school. Our school is training people how in unusual places to learn how to serve people and praying to prophesy. And, you know, we, have, we hardly can ever have visitors come to town where they don't get prophesied over in a grocery store or a restaurant or something because, because you've learned how to take stuff out of the house. What I'm saying this year,